I hate thrifting. The idea that you have to walk through this tightly crammed room and sift through pounds and pounds of clothes just to spend three hours there and leave with nothing is just not for me. But my partner G loves it. And guess who gets dragged along? Me. Yeah, I don't really have fun, but it's kind of fun when there's not just clothes there to look through. I like looking through old camera shoes sometimes, but my favorite thing to look through is art supplies. You could get insane deals from some old who doesn't know what Liquitex is. So I had an idea, but let's start at the beginning. So I was in a thrift store with my lovely partner the other day, you know, just browsing, perusing some would say. I saw this exceptionally extravagant hat and it got me thinking, what if I were to put this on and take a photo right now, you know, to eventually reference it. I ran to G and I was like, yo, grab a flick of me real quick with this hat. And I was just trying to get different angles of it so that I could, you know, eventually finagle with the software to make it work. Okay, so I have this beautiful reference photo of a thrift store. So what if I were to make a painting only using thrifted supplies and show it to G to see what they think of it? So without further ado, so back home, I threw it into Photoshop and started playing with the backgrounds. Now I remembered about Photoshop's AI program. I quickly selected the clothes that were on my body in the photo and asked it to give me 16th century cavalier clothing to match the hat. And I settled on this last one. Um, I also started looking at some art books uh, and found a piece by Rembrandt. And I really love this background where it's kind of earthy tones, just a gradient, it's not too distracting. I made this background in Photoshop to sort of complement the piece. At this point, I'm gonna start the painting, but I'll chat about the thrifted items that I used to make it along the way. Many of you will probably get mad at me because I kind of robbed the thrift store for this. And when I say that, I mean that I got this for $3. $3 for this canvas. It's incredible. So this is what I'm gonna paint on. If you know me, you know that I loved using the doodle grid technique. So what you're seeing on the screen now is me sort of outlining the basic sketch that I made in Photoshop, um, overlaid over this doodle grid that I made. And you'll see in a minute that I was happy with the sketch at this point, you know, it was it was looking like me, which is always good. But I wasn't too happy with the sort of composition of it. Oh. I wasn't too happy with the sketch, so I'm just putting some gesso over it. I'm gonna sand it down and then re-sketch this because I just didn't like it, like I just said two seconds ago. Hello, um, the new sketch is done. I'm very happy with it. I'm thinking of adding a sword here. Not so sure yet. I went to a large vintage sort of yard sale in upstate New York, and this guy was selling this whole paint set for $30. So here's what it came with. It came with a palette, a flat canvas, a large white tube, a bunch of tube colors of almost every color, linseed oil, willow charcoal, a painting knife, a bunch of different size brushes, and an instruction booklet, um, and a color sheet. So a lot of different things, a lot of different vintage things from the 1950s. It didn't come with a mineral spirits can, which uh, it did promise it did, but it spilled and everything was kind of full of it. So this is the paint that I'll be using for my paintings. I will be wearing gloves with this because I believe that these older paintings were a lot more toxic. So I'm gonna go put on gloves and start painting this background in. I didn't really consider how difficult squeezing out the paint would be. Okay, whoa. Oh. Like that yellow ochre just like didn't want to come out. This one's so rough. Okay. But it all worked out eventually. That'll do. Um, just the texture that I'm getting on here is very nice. My only complaint is this burnt umber is very, very rough. It seems as though it's dried a little bit, but... You could hear me complain about that burnt umber a little bit, and what I learned later on, this paint was probably made with some heavy metals, you know, specifically like lead. So, um, you know, in this scene I, I don't wear gloves, but from this point on I definitely do. Okay, let's start working on this clothing. Dark colors are so pigment. I'm gonna do a mixture of this ultramarine blue, this uh, cadmium yellow to try and have this sort of aqua color, but if not, then I'll go for that cerulean that's over there, but yeah. I was really feeling this green color because I made the background orange. I think that contrasted really nicely. It really separated myself from the background, which I was kind of scared of because in the reference photo, there were a lot of sort of darker parts like in the hat and the beard, the mustache, and I didn't really want that to sort of blend in the background. So having the difference in tones really, you know, separates the background and the, and the foreground, the subject matter. You know, I, I think this may be a good uh, time to mention that 
Although I did uh, get a, go to school for art in the most technical sense, I went uh, for a bachelor's degree in uh, dual major for psychology and art. Um, so I was, you know, trained traditionally in a classroom setting. Um, but a lot of my oil painting skills started in 2020 when I hadn't even, you know, taken an oil painting class. So um, a lot of my techniques and, and skills are, are sort of on, from my own. So, you know, take some of the things that I'm doing with a grain of salt. like. Right here, I'm just putting sort of base tones on things just to try to get the local color, um, try to get the most similar color that I can, you know, to eventually flesh it out even more with more precise tones that I decide to mix later on. So yeah, just trying to define like the highlights, the, the more shaded parts that I was doing. Um, and it was a little bit more difficult with this one because the reference photo had uh, really flat lighting, right? It was just sunlight. There was no nothing really dynamic except for maybe the part next to the ear. So uh, a lot of sort of my forehead area was uh, kind of blocking out the hat that I was wearing in the reference photo. And then also creating that shading that I wanted, creating the dramatic lighting um, of this light sort of coming from the top left of the painting. And now my friends, we have entered the ugly stage. This painting, it looks terrible, right? Uh, everything is sort of splotchy. Things don't really look right. It doesn't even look like a human at some parts. Um, but this is natural, right? This happens, this happens in paintings. Uh, usually I like to, you know, leave things be, but I was a little bit really annoyed with the profile, with sort of the silhouette that I was creating. Um, so I went in with the background again to try to fix my nose a little bit um, and sort of knock in some of those deeper tones. Um, but you know, this is that, that point where you just have to deal with it, let it dry, put another coat over it, you know, um, not be too stressed about it. This happens, this does happen. So yeah. All right, cool. Now that everything has sort of a layer of paint on it, the last thing was that feather. Um, I'm able to build it up, right? Because uh, I work in layers when I paint and, you know, having multiple layers of paint to, to, to build on helps me compare the previous ones that I put on and maybe sort of shift the tones and, you know, just find that perfect color that I'm looking for. So that's what this is. Uh, this short time lapse is of me really dialing in the face, you know, getting all those all those colors, right? All the shadows, um, deciding where they're gonna land. Um, not really thinking about proportion much, but just, you know, getting those colors right. And this has to be one of my favorite parts of the painting process because, you know, I'm really dialing in those colors and making everything look right. You get really bogged down in the ugly painting stage, but you know, this one sort of brings back that confidence and gives you the energy to, to finish it off. Um, in a previous video, I talked about me learning about this technique to paint like a printer. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just, you know, slowly coloring things in, you know, going little by little, not taking, not spending too little time in every part, um, you know, just working it out. Painting portraits is like a puzzle, but you know, a little bit more leeway because you have some things that you need to look right, but like, you know, especially when I think about how the lighting is hitting on his face, I could have, you know, creativity with that. I could have creativity in the amount of blue that I use in the shadows, you know, maybe maybe to create a different feeling. I'm going for a more naturalistic, you know, style, so I didn't go for a lot of those changes, uh, those stylistic changes, but, um, but this part is just so much fun. All right, I'm done rambling about painting. I'm gonna do a cool edit leading into this final portion of the painting. All right, cool, we back. 
I'm working on these final touches, including the glasses, you know, really making those seem sharp and realistic. And then I'm also gonna do the feather a little bit later on. And yeah, I'm very excited to show this to G. Uh, I actually edited this whole video, but I'm waiting to see them a little bit after this edit goes out um, because I kind of wanted to show them this video along with uh, the reaction. So, you know, a lot of hours have gone into this painting, um, both in physically painting it and then also doing my quote unquote research and going to all these thrift stores. But this has been a fun one. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This will sit proudly in my room. I'll wait six months before I put a varnish coat on it. You know, if you've made it this far, I assume you enjoyed the content. So, you know, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. And without further ado, here's G's reaction. And right here. Wait, don't open, don't open. And go. Oh, wow. That looks so great, Christian. I painted this with the... Um, with the paint from like the 1950s that we bought. Remember that? At the yards? What is it? At the flea market. The flea market, yeah. Oh my god. And gosh. then this canvas. Do you remember how much it was? The one that was three bucks? Yeah. That's what I used. I love it. I recognize this picture too. I took that of you. Yes, sir. 